Wow, I did not record. All right, going live in two minutes. We good, Tanny? We good? Let's pray. Mm -hmm. In two minutes, we can have time to pray. going to do it comes what me mm. we are live yeah that makes sense good evening good evening everybody and welcome i am just having here a conversation with tanny uh tanny good evening and welcome to Thank our you for having me again. absolutely absolutely i think that we are definitely live i see some people uh joining you know, the thing about going live uh, and versus recording the messages and then just playing it live or play or, you know, uploading on the YouTube is that we never know. We never know what could happen live, but we we trust in our good Lord Jesus mm -hmm. that everything goes well, you know. Amen. 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 Anyway, Tani, tonight we are going to be talking about the pressures of life. I mm -hmm. see folks are joining. Welcome. Please welcome let us Welcome, everyone. Yes, welcome. yes. Go ahead, Tani. Give the welcome to everybody. No, I just want to say welcome to all that is joining us this evening for another message in This Changes Everything series of Hope Evangelistic Meeting. I pray that tonight will be a blessing to you all invite a friend share it on your facebook page share it on your youtube please and be blessed amen amen thank you tanny 68 chevelle you know i don't know how to turn on the captions for the hearing impaired um on the live so i know that when i upload uh videos on youtube that i am able to to turn the captions but you know i apologize to uh mark and karen i know that you guys have actually asked for that before and uh to be honest with you i don't know i'll look into this to see if i can turn on the um the 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 captions uh, but I will definitely look into that and, and, and hopefully tomorrow will give you a definite answer on that. 
Tani, tonight we're talking about um, the pressures of life. What do you think? Do, do you think that we go, that we uh, that we face pressures every day? What kind of pressures do we do we face uh, as 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 we engage in this in our everyday kind of life? I mean, there are different pressures. One of the main thing that you know people always talk about is peer pressure and how peer young pressure? people you know, go into peer pressure, but there are so many things um, that c cause pressures um, in your daily life. Sometimes it might be at work and you have a decision to make and you know that this might be the way to do it. And because majority of the people are saying do it this way, then you get, you know, being pressured to make the decision that you would not normally make or you know that you did not want to make. Mm. So every day we face pressures, but is how we deal with it to make the difference. There is, um, that is true. So on August 10th, look at this, uh, this story that I found. On August 10th, 1990, uh, 1948, a pioneering television producer named Alan Funt debuted a hidden camera reality TV show called Candid Camera. Did you ever watch Candid Camera? I think so, yeah. The genius of the show is that it caught people in act of being themselves. It produced lots of laughs, but it also offered a fascinating look into the human psyche. In one episode titled Face the Rear, an unsuspecting person boarding an, uh, boarded an elevator and naturally turned around to face the front of the elevator. Mm -hmm. So this is a social experiment to see how people would react that instead of turning around and looking at the door of the elevator once you're in, they simply faced the back wall of the elevator. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> so I have a video that I want us to watch and I want uh, our viewers to watch and then we'll just talk a little bit about that, okay? Okay. So you walk into an elevator and naturally you turn and face the door, right? It's just what we do without even thinking. Here on Would You Fall For That, we decided we had to pay homage to Candid Camera. How this man tries to maintain his individuality. So right now we are reenacting their famous test of conformity. The elevator experiment. So we found a nice elevator at the Juilliard School and gathered our Would You Fall For That stuff. If we turn to face the back of the elevator, would others follow? All right, in the blue T-shirt, that is Nadia. She is an innocent passerby. Has nothing to do with this. Everybody else in that elevator, they all work for Wait. Would You Fall For That. They are all in on the experiment. They are all purposefully facing the wrong way. Nadia is facing the front. You can just see the back of her head wearing the blue T-shirt. That's Nadia. She is facing the front of the elevator like a normal human being. Everybody else is facing the back. We're playing this to you in real time, no editing, as it actually happened. Okay, floor two. Rebecca gets off. Emily gets on. She also works for us. We're swapping people in and out to reinforce the behavior. Emily's acting like it's the most normal. Oh. Nadia's turned. Nadia, it, okay, her bag is slipping off her shoulder. She's nervously playing with it. Yeah. Nadia's now halfway round. Will she go any further? Emily gets off, Mike gets on. Again, Mike works for the show. Presses his button, faces the back like it's the most normal thing in the world, like he does it every day. Nadia is really feeling the pressure right now. I'm not gonna see anyone else. Isn't he Scott's making some small talk. He was on celebrity rehab, I think. Oh. Yeah. She's looking towards the back of the elevator because everybody else is. Floor four. I love the guy. Fourth floor, Mike gets off. Lauren gets on. Lauren also works for us. She's in. Oh, and Nadia, Nadia, Nadia has gone. The fourth floor, Nadia has turned all the way around. She's looking at the back of the elevator. That is not normal human behavior. Nadia is looking at the back of the elevator purely because everybody else is. Because everybody else turned, she finally turned as well. The pressure of life. <laughs> 
the pressure it's it is so interesting right like you know well it's it's you know that it's not the norm you know that it's not what usually people usually people do but yet again you do it why is it that we are like that or why is it that we respond like that sometimes sometimes is people want to be with the majority Ooh, that's a good point. Sometimes we do not want to be excluded. We don't want to be the odd duck in the family. We don't want to be the odd co-worker, employee of the company. So we conform to to the norm, quote unquote, and what everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. And I think that there is a a, a verse in, in Romans, right, that talks about that. It talks about not conforming to the uh, to the norms of this life, but also but staying true to ourselves, staying true yeah. to what God has called us to do. And and James one verse twelve also said, "Blessed is the man who remains steadfast on the trials, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of mm. life, which God has promised to those who love Him." Mm. I like that. I like that. Mercy. So tonight we're going to be talking about that. Um, and uh, I think that there is a message here. I think that God wants us to to not be conformed. And if our viewers tonight can uh, contribute to this, uh, absolutely. If, we, if there is something that we can pray for you about tonight, please let us know. Tani and I, we are keeping... Um, a list of the prayer requests that are coming in. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you have been blessed as well with these messages, go ahead and share the live transmission, share the uh, YouTube videos as well with somebody that who can benefit and who can uh, be blessed by these messages as well. Amen. Tani, would you, uh, would you lead us in prayer tonight as we jump in and um, to God's message? Sure, let us pray. Our loving God and our Father, tonight we want to thank you, Lord, again for the opportunity for coming here, Lord, to worship your high and holy name. Father, we have many names on our prayer list that we are praying for. You know the names. You know them before they were born. You know each and every one of us. You know our needs. Your word tell us, Lord, that you will supply our needs according to your riches in glory. Mm. And so, Father, tonight I pray for those who need comfort. I pray for those who need strength. I pray for those who are in the valley of decision, Lord, that they will make that bold step for you, oh God. Lord, tonight I pray, Heavenly Father, that as you continue to pour your love and your mercy and your blessing upon us that we will be receptive towards it lord teach us to love one another because your word tells us that we need to love each other bind us together lord we pray we pray for the pastor we pray for the message tonight lord that it will go or divide it into how many pieces to those that are listening, oh God, and that it will do a new thing within their lives, Father. I pray tonight for those who need healing. I pray for those on the front line, day mm. after day, Lord, giving their Amen. lives and services for humanity, oh God. Amen. I pray for those who need bread, Lord Jesus. Mm. You promised that our bread and our water shall be sure. And Lord, we know in this time when people seems to be looking for hope. We pray, Father, that you will come in and be the hope, Lord Jesus, that mm. you promised to be for um, for us, your children. Father, we thank you, Lord. We praise your name. And we ask tonight, Lord Jesus, that you will give us a double portion of your Amen. blessing. And send your Holy Spirit upon us, Lord Jesus, that we will do the work that you call us to do. Mm. Let us magnify your name together, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Tani. Prayer, there is prayer. There is power in prayer, they say, right? Amen. And uh, we continue to honor and glorify our Heavenly Father. So um, as we jump in, uh, we're going we're gonna to have uh, Jenny Covarrubias from the Crossling Church. I have a son here tonight with us. So you walk. You were the word at the beginning, one with God, the Lord Most High. 
the hidden glory in the creation now revealed in you are Christ what a beautiful name it is what a beautiful name it is the name Nothing compares to this What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus You didn't want heaven without us So Jesus, you brought heaven down My sin was great, your love was greater Nothing compares to this, what a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Death could not hold you, the veil tore before you, the silence, the boast of sin and grave, the heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory for you are raised to life again you have no rival you have no equal now and forever God you reign yours is the kingdom yours is the What a powerful name it is, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ my King, what a powerful name it is, nothing can stand against, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen for that. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Jenny Covarrubias. Um, what a beautiful name of Jesus, right? So tonight we're going to be talking about uh, the pressures of life. Let me ask you something. How are you handling the pressures of life? And I'd like to um, ask you for us to open, for you to open your Bible in the book of Matthew chapter 27. Uh, verse 11 through verse 14. Matthew chapter 27. Uh, we're going to be talking about today the precious of life. Matthew 27 verse 11 to 14. This week we are talking about the cross. And this uh, this theme uh, series called This Changes Everything. For Jesus changed everything at the cross. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, everything changed at the cross. And this week we're looking at how relevant the cross is, right? Um, if the cross still, does it, does it have a direct impact in our lives today? Not only for the future, but also for the present, right? So let's look at Matthew chapter 27, verse 11 through 14. And the Bible says the following. Now Jesus stood before the governor and the governor asked him saying, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus said to him, It is as you say. And while he was being accused by the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? 
But he answered him not one word, so the governor marveled greatly. Mm. Jesus is living his last hours. By this time, he had spent time with his father in prayer. He had already shared his last meal with his disciples. Perhaps he had been betrayed. He had been denied by, by this time. All of his disciples had abandoned him. He was alone and he was starting to feel that his father was also abandoning him. And Jesus faces Pilate and Herod. And nobody wanted to judge him. Nobody wanted to take responsibility. Nobody wanted to make a decision. They sent Jesus back and forth to other, to one another. But there is pressure from the people. In Matthew chapter 27, verse 15 to 23, says the following. Now, at the feast, the governor was accustomed to releasing the, to the multitude one prisoner who, whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they had gathered together, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Christ? For he knew that they had handed him over because of envy. Verse 19. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent to him saying, Have nothing to do with that just man, for I have suffered many things today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitudes that they should ask for Barabbas and destroyed Jesus. And the governor answered and said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? And they said, Barabbas. And Pilate said to them, What then shall I do to, G to, to, to Jesus? And the governor answered and said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, What then I shall do with Jesus who is called the Christ? And they all said to him, Let him be crucified. Verse 23. Then the governor said, Why? What evil has he done? But they cried out all the more, saying, Let him be crucified. Mercy. The pressure of the people is so strong that it doesn't allow him to make the right decision. So let's apply that a little bit to our life today. And I ask you, what are some of the pressures of life that you are going through that's not letting you make the right decisions. In David Reardon's book titled Aborted Women, Silent No More, one woman, one woman shares why she had an abortion even though she felt it was wrong. Her family would not support her decision to keep the baby. Her boyfriend said he would give her no emotional or financial help whatsoever. Other people that matter told her to abort. And when she said she didn't want to, they started listing reasons why she should. She started feeling like maybe she was crazy to want to keep it. And she finally told everyone she would have the abortion just to get them off their back. But inside, she still didn't want to have the abortion. Unfortunately, when the abortion day came, she shut off her feelings. She was scared not to do it because of her, of how her family and boyfriend felt. Mm. She later expresses her anger at herself for giving in to the pressures of others. She felt so alone in her feelings to have her baby. Remember Aaron? When, when Moses went up the mountain to be with God for almost a month and a half, the people pressured Aaron so much to make them a god of gold that he did. Gideon, the pressure of the people God sent him to save, also led him to offer a sacrifice that he wasn't supposed to do. Moses, the pressure of the people of Israel, he asked God for meat. And it turned out to be the death of many. How about King Saul? 
in the pressure of fear that he was going to be attacked, he did what the priest was supposed to do and sinned. Nonetheless, there were some good people. There were some people who stood by God and were not moved. There is a story in the book of Daniel chapter 3. And check it out. Daniel chapter 3. And it says... King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold 60 cubits high and 6 cubits wide. And it set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. He then summoned the satraps, perfects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the other provincial officials to come to the dedication of the image he had set up. So the satraps, perfects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all other provincial officials assembled for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up and they stood before it. Then the herald loudly proclaimed, nations and peoples of every language, this is what you're commanded to do. As soon as you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, you must fall and worship the image of the gold that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. And look at Daniel's friend's response. King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. Mercy. Imagine talking to to a king like that. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, whoa, what happened here? He says, but even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Wow. The satraps, perfects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the other provincial officials assembled for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And they stood before it. Mercy. The herald loudly proclaimed, Nations and people of every language, this is what you're commanded to do. As soon as you hear the sound, as soon as you hear the sound of the horn, flute, cither, lyre, harp, and all these kinds of music, you must fall down and worship the image of God, the King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Wow. So let me ask you this. I mean, you, you know, you are before, you are before a king that is able to kill you and you're still going to respond like that? You're still going to, to say the things that you're saying to Daniel? And even additionally, Even additionally, sorry folks, I lost signal there for a second. Even after all of these things, he says, look, I know the God we serve. I know that he will deliver us. But if he does not, we will not worship the image of gold that you have set up. Daniel's friends knew really well the God they worshipped. Their beliefs and acts did not depend on circumstances. And listen to this very carefully. Their beliefs and acts did not depend on expectations. Their beliefs and acts did not depend on problems and solutions. Their beliefs and acts were grounded in the love that they had for God. Let me ask you this. What about your beliefs? Do they change like the weather changes? Do they fluctuate depending on how you are feeling? Do they move you according to the pressure you receive? Your beliefs and actions should be grounded in love because the Bible says that love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. 
It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. You shouldn't go to church based on how you feel, but because she is the bride of Jesus and you love Him. In marriage, not because of your of how your spouse behaves, but because of your love to her and God. The Sabbath. You don't work on the Sabbath because you 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 don't work on the Sabbath because you love God and obey His commandments, and you are not moved for the pressures of life and the pressures of your workplace that demands you to work on the Sabbath day. Tithe and offerings. It does not fluctuate because of your because of your love to God. Your decision to get baptized. It does not change on how you feel, ready or not, because of your love for God. He must be your foundation for every decision you make, regardless of the circumstances of life. I read the story of a man who got a ticket for speeding. A man who got a ticket for speeding and had to go to traffic school. In the defensive driving part, uh, they created a scenario, a scenario, right? They said, look, you are stopped at a stop sign. But you look in your rear view mirror and see a car coming towards you that you realize is going to rear end you. What should you do? And almost everybody in the class said, you should keep your feet <laughs> off the brake so that when that car hits you, you would go forward absorbing some of the shock. And the teacher said, that's wrong. That was the wrong answer. They were told, put your brake on as tight as you can and brace yourself for that collision. If your car is rigid and braced, if it's on its foundation, then when the horizontal pressure hits, there will be less damage to your car and to the occupants. If your car is not braked, you get the whiplash effect. Mm. You know, if we apply that principle to our lives, wow. There is no wonder why Jesus said for us to be anchored into the rock. When we have found his faithfulness and his love, and we have made that the foundation of our life, then we are better able to handle the horizontal pressures of life. Pilate was moved by the pressure of the people. Matthew chapter 27, verse 24 and verse 25 says the following. When Pilate saw that he could not prevail at all, but rather that a tumult was rising, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. You see to it. And all the people answered and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Man. Hmm. His blood be on us and on our children. Could you say that? Could you put that kind of, of curse on your children? I'm not a father. My wife and I were not parents, but I can't imagine anybody saying, you know what? I am so convinced on this that if there is a curse coming, let there be there, let there be that on me and on our children. Pilate thought that he could wash his hand his sin with water. Have you ever tried to justify your sin? Like saying 
that God will understand. God will understand why I have to break the Sabbath. God will understand why I don't give tithe and offerings. God will understand why I'm not faithful to Him. God will understand my situation. He'll understand why you have to do all of these things. Or why you commit that sin. Well, let me tell you something. God did not shed His blood for nothing. And because He, okay, listen to this. Because He does understand your situation is that He died on that cross at Calvary and changed everything. Do not live a cheap gospel. Do not sell the gospel cheap. Do not justify your sin, but cling unto that cross and make Him your foundation so that when the pressures of life come, you are able to withstand. Pilate washes his hands with water. The people make a decision. And the response in verse 25 mm, says, And all the people answered and said, His blood be on us and on our children. The reality is this. Tonight you are in Pilate's position. You have pressures in life. You have peer pressure. You have social pressure. You have your own human nature as pressure. And you have expectations, but you must make a decision. And here's tonight's million dollar question. What are you going to do with the blood of Jesus? What are you going to do with the pressures that keep you from finding true joy? I heard the story of a man who was tired of the pressure of his alarm clock. Horace Whittle. I'm sure I'm pronouncing his last name wrong. Horace Whittle, a dock worker in Gillingham, England. For 47 years, he hated his alarm clock. Some of you are like, hey man, pastor, I hate mine too. For 47 years, early in the dark, every morning, that thing jangled him awake. For 47 years, he longed to ignore it. To shut it off. And for 47 years he submitted to the pressure of that time. That clock. But on the day of his retirement. Mercy. On the day of his retirement he got his revenge. He took his alarm clock to work. And flattened it in an 80 ton hydraulic press. He said it was a lovely feeling. <laughs> Tonight is a good night to destroy those pressures of life who is keeping you from an everlasting joy at the foot of the cross with Jesus. And know this, that the gospel is dangerous. Well, pastor, yes, I said it, the, path, the, the, the gospel is dangerous because, let me explain that, because the blood of the lamb can save you or the blood of the lamb can condemn you. The blood of the Lamb can wash your sins away or it can echo what the crowd who crucified Jesus said, His blood be on us and our children. So what is it going to be tonight as we close, as I close and as I pray? What's it going to be? What are we going to do with the pressures of this life? And I don't know what kind of pressure you are facing, but I sure would like to know. I sure would like to pray for you. I've said it this week, and I continue saying it about the pressures that we live here. Well, about the, the chaotic year that we're living in. This 2020 has changed everything. But at the same time, Jesus also changed everything at the cross. Here's what I want you to take tonight. A couple of things. One, what are some of the pressures that you're giving into that God is saying, no, I got this. And secondly, what are you going to do with the blood of Jesus? 
Are you going to accept it? Are you going to, uh, are you going to, to accept the forgiveness of your sins? Are you going to uh, 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 live a joyful Christian life, or continue to allow the pressures of life to weigh you down? I pray tonight that I might be your choice to say, Lord, I'm not sure what to do. There's a lot of things that are weighing me down. But tonight I share, I cast all of these pressures at the foot of the cross. Tonight, Father, I cast my pressures and the pressures of this life at the foot of the cross. And I accept your blood as payment for the forgiveness of my sins. Can I pray with you? If you would like to say this, if you would like to give your life to Jesus, pray with me. Father, I cast my fear, I cast this pressure, and I give you, Lord, all of the things that are weighing me down to you tonight. I claim that I am not, Father, carrying this load anymore, but I'm giving it to you. Father, and tonight I accept the forgiveness of my sins. And thank you, Father, for that cross. Thank you, Lord, for that sacrifice. For you changed everything there, Lord. Father, we love you. I love you, Father. May you continue to change my life until I see you in the clouds of glory. In the name of Christ, I pray. Amen. God bless you, each and every single one of you. We invite you, I invite you to continue joining in uh, each night this week at 7.15 Central Time, Texas Time. I see that some of you have joined. I see uh, Pastor John Arana. Welcome, Marilu. Ricardo Bernal, Blessing, Suli Gomez, Fernando Calderon, each and every single one of you. I hope nothing but blessings upon your life. May the Lord continue to bless you. Mark, Tom, uh, Mark and Karen, DJ, God bless you, everybody. And uh, I will see you here tomorrow at 7.15.